How do great public speakers get that way? What advice do they have for the rest of us? What can they teach us about overcoming our fears and improving as speakers? Luckily, there's a world of wisdom among the great public speakers of the Pacific Northwest. Now that wisdom is yours through a collection of open educational resources. This collection is based on nearly 30 hours of interviews with 50 great public speakers. It has been compiled into the 50 Why Speakers Project. Business leaders, educators, public servants, and professional speakers, journalists, sport figures, combine forces to share tips and tricks, strategies to take you into a new world of confidence and influence as a public speaker. Not the biggest thing in the world. Not everybody's, and, and I don't think most people in an audience are as critical of you as you probably believe they are. Preparation. Um, it's something I live by today. I built a piece of paper my pocket from yesterday. It was in my different jacket, but I thought if Phil asked me these questions, I'd it. You know, and I still that that's one of those notes come in. I tend to re rely on those notes a little bit more than just winging it. Don't be unprepared. I mean, be prepared. Don't don't think you're going to wing it and do a great mm -hmm. job. I. Uh, you know, I know some great speakers, great speakers, who most of the time, often when they wing it, they do okay, but sometimes they do horribly. When they're communicating to the audience, it's not, not always a level of respect for the audience. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm up here and you're down there, and so I'm talking down to you. The, the age-old rule of kind of three, there's three key things that you can do. The, the standard way of overcoming, and I once asked uh, Don James, the football coach, what do you do when you've got a kicker who can't make a field goal under a pressure situation? And he said, get a new kicker. So the material world that is out there is all about willpower. A lot of times I'm trying to use humor to kind of break the ice. And then, but after that, I don't really try to plan humor in. Um, I just let it naturally happen. I want you to go to that technical college. I want you to give the speech students. I want you to make them an offer. They can't refuse. You tell them, uh, Don Corleone sent you. Ask the question about what do we want as extras? Yeah. PowerPoint, handouts, Legos, tchotchkes, yeah. etc. And I believe it depends on the reason you're there. If it's hard for you to communicate on paper and write, it's going to make it, in my opinion, a little harder to develop a speech and a style. So I think being a good writer is important. Um, I will say that in all of my experience giving speeches or making presentations, leave them wanting more. Anytime you're responding to questions, you want to answer the question and you want to do it in a direct fashion. Talk about it, but a lot of times I'll actually leave it for the Q&A because there are some things that people want to know and maybe there's a story that you like to tell that relates to that or whatever that doesn't really fit with all the rest of your material. So it's okay to leave something for the Q&A that you know they're going to ask. persuasion with pathos. Um, people feel really strongly about it and they'll go, but if there's not a logical connection to it, then that persuasion fades away and they don't continue the advocacy or whatever you're asking them to do. So I think it's the connection between your credibility, the expert credibility you can bring in, how well you can make a sound argument, and then um, how can you touch their heart. You need to be concerned not with what I want, or I need, but with what you want and you need and what will be good for our community and why it's important. Uh, so you've got to take the focus off yourself. It's about the message and how I can deliver the message to the audience. Because if it's just about me, I can just talk to myself in my car. Some of the most persuasive ones are ones that have that personal touch. Um, when I can reach out to you and, and 
make a connection with you or I can make a connection with other people in the audience, you're going to be way more successful. It can enhance your world of work, your world of self-esteem, and your world of relationships with other people. Everyone can benefit from becoming a better public speaker. Sponsored by Clover Park Technical College in Lakewood, Washington. The World of 50 Y Speakers Materials is free and available to anyone, anywhere, anytime, at a convenient website. You can search for speakers, find speaking ideas, tailored to your career field, adventure and literature, or religion, conversation and the arts, law and criminal justice. You can look up solutions to pesky speaking problems that concern you. Sneak into my room and crawl under the covers of nonsense in your sleep.